Is he gonna cover this? No, he has no power points for it. Pause. Boom! The situation won't get better. What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel. My name is Shanks, and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.22 between good and evil. We have the Yellow Rohan player Araporn versus the Blue Isengard player Matheus. So it's like an El Classico matchup, and we like those. Rohan against Isengard, just like in the films. And he's gonna use those peasants to capture those two farms. So, I mean, I don't like to start from Rohan that much because you can, you know, you need to play a bit more aggressively. And also the build order from Isengard is a bit mistaken place for my, in my opinion. I would like to place the Uruk pit here because your opponent will most likely attack you from this direction or from the top. And the Uruks coming from this angle will, you know, be able to be activated a bit faster. And in the early game, every second matters. But luckily for Isengard, Rohan is not going to achieve too much with only you know, sending peasants one by one, because the Uruks are way stronger than peasants in a one-on-one -on -one situation, even without a Warchant. And for that reason, you need to outnumber them in order to achieve a great amount of early game damage versus Isengard, which is also really important because Isengard will be super rich later on. So for now, Isengard's eco is pretty much untouched. And again, the Uruks are not only stronger, but also faster. It means running away is not going to be a great option and also uruks using the formation look you will see the fight is not even close you know in order to win against uruks you need to have two versus one just like in the films boys uruks this is no rebel of mindless orcs so the hobbit was able to sneak through that's good and each worker his killing is worth 25 penny and that's a lot so that's over 100 damage 125 Look, now you better run, because the workers, they can't deal with the Hobbit when he's full HP. Boom. Like, he dealt a lot of damage, and during all this time, the Lumber Mill is not giving you any money. So even though Rohan's early game could be a much better start uh, than it is, but it's still not bad, because he killed a lot of workers. The Uruks, I think he's not paying attention to them, and the Hobbit can keep doing what he's doing. Exactly that. And also in the meantime, Isengard was able to creep with the Warchant in his two Uruks. And the delayed push with the peasants, look, the workers are repairing. When you find yourself in a situation like this, you want to kill the workers first, like he does. Because you can't destroy the Lumber Mill with only three remaining peasants from the battalion if there are many of them repairing. So yeah, basically, and not a single Lumber Mill got destroyed, but both of them got kind of disabled, which is very good. However... Uh, with three Lumber Mills under his control, he has now the wood bonus of 20%, which means he can fill up the bees incredibly fast. However, the first Rohirrim arrives on the field. After multiple farms, I mean, I don't like the build order from Rohan that much, to be honest with you, because I think it's a little bit too slow, and Isengard later on will be very strong. Remember, Rohan is a faction that relies on leadership. Isengard they can negate this with the Freezing Rain. But yeah, we will see. I mean, the start could be much better for the Rohan player. Okay, beautiful. They will get level 2 now. Uh, Rohan should be trying to get to the Elven Alliance to counter the Pikemen. And by the way, sorry for my voice, guys. I'm a bit sick, but the show must go on. Beautiful. So he's getting a lot of experience, but Isengard has almost two power points in the bank. So this spot is either being safe for the Warg Pit or for the Armory. I would go for the Warg Pit, because it gives you the cheese potential, so you can use the Palantir on your Warg Riders to try to cheese on some Rohirrim and kill them. And also, Wargs will be essential later on to deal with the Peasants. Rohan player might be recruiting later on from the farms to counter the Pikemen. You will be recruiting to counter his horses. So, Rock, Paper, Scissor system. Two power points in the bank, so industry would be nice. If Theorin King shall rise once more. And sending those Uruks one by one forward, when you know the Rohirrim are on the field, is a big mistake. Because they will not do much but feed. And this Rohan is actually actively trying to level up his Theorin. He's gonna get level 2 now. Level 4 is the power spike we are looking for. So we have the Pikemen coming now to this location. And they should be able to destroy this farm before the peasant makes it out. Uh, makes it out. 30 seconds cooldown, 28 seconds build time, I mean, because it's level 2. But I think the Pikes, they should be able to destroy it a bit faster. Gonna be close, but you will find out. And here, he was feeding even more experience to Theorin, who's almost level 3. 
and after creeping this he will actually get quite close to level 4. That's a strategy I've not seen since a long time. That only is possible because Isengard is kind of not playing aggressively with the pikemen, you know? The Berserker will be used to deal with the peasants, no problemo. Look, the splash damage is coming in clutch. Killing three peasants with only one swing of his lightsaber. I mean, to be honest, it looks like a lightsaber. Like a Sith Lord, you know? Because it's red, it's shining, it's big. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. There are still many creeps left on the map, by the way. Isengard was only able to creep one layer. And again, he's camping too much. Whereas Rohan, he should be using those pikemen to scout the area a bit more. And deny or delay the creeping from his opponent, who is having a blast right now, right? He's creeping everything for free, getting slowly his King of Rohan to level 4. Level 4 unlock, glorious charge, available. The only thing for Rohan, which, which is not good, is the lack of map control and map presence. So, Isengard is killing for free. Remember, Isengard will out-sustain you in the economical department. And Rohan, with only 7 available spots in the castle, needs desperately the map control. Without the map control, you can't achieve too much. So, he went also for the Elven Alliance, which was used around this location to deal with the pikemen. And it means he will also be able to create this one. Lords can't do much in this situation because he's level 1. Palantir is going to be used. And Drohirim can still chase. Because even with the Palantir, Lords can't outrun the horses. And he will be taken down. So this is a big mistake from Isengard. And we have two Rohirrim only. So the Ro Gonna, uh, Rohan player is playing it like with the Gondor faction. But two horses are simply not enough. You need to have like three, four horses to maintain the dominance on the map control. But it's not working too bad for Rohan as well, you know. This is a lead game build. Later on, the glorious charge from the, you know, King of Rohan theory is going to be very impactful. But we will find out. Archer range at the outpost. I also don't like, don't like this one. You might not get be you might not get be you might not get punished for this. Can't even talk. But it's always safer to build production buildings which are important in the main castle with like a wall protection so basically what rohan is achieving trying to achieve in this situation is to get this building to level two so you can have fire or purchase and also ilma could be a nice hero but he is not even close to be recruited so if you don't know you can fight the pikeman in a one-on-one -on -one situation with upgrades and theory leadership so you need to just stop before the trample and fight them in the melee range especially when they have like levels on them like level four for example but in this situation, they are too badly damaged, so they need to be better backing off. Don't lose the whole battalion, theory. No, Rohan is not paying attention. Okay, Palantir. Again, Palantir is making you faster, but it won't make an infantry unit as fast as a cavalry. That will be kind of broken. Imagine Uruks moving the same speed like Rohirrim. That would be. <laughs> that's not the main purpose. Level two. He bought banner on them. So now it's going to hit level 2, but you can see the eco from, uh, from Rohan is pretty low, unlike from Isengard. Isengard is good eco, and even going for the wizard himself, Saruman, who is going to offer Theorin a uh, peace. Let's make peace, you and I. Oh, still no shouldn't be trampling, because the porcupine formation gives them immunity to knockback, so they won't get knocked down, they won't receive any damage from the trample. That's why pikemen are still a great counter. Oh my goodness, you scared me, White Wizard. Look at him, boys. He's looking at the at the minimap. He's like, that's my boys right there, you know? My my boys, Uruks, are doing a great job in the map control. Look his way. He's literally staring at the map control. Okay. So level 5 horses, almost level 6, level 4. Amazing. And now Rohirrim Archers. Pyro purchase too. Now you can demolish this building and replace it with a farm. Because again, Rohan's eco is not looking too hot. He has only two farms, but he's about to lose one of these. That's a waste of time. So especially with the arrow, you will deal like no damage. It will take you one hour. Legit one hour to destroy this. But the pikes are coming now. So the power spike we are looking for here is for Isengard to get Lourdes level 5. But level 1 Lourdes is already a big threat because he has the cripple available with level 1. That means whenever Theorin King comes close to the Lourdes, he will get crippled on place for like 1 minute. And that's more duration of the cripple compared to the duration of the Glorious Charge, which makes Theodin quite tanky. But even with the Glorious Charge, Theodin is super weak. As a hero, 
against Pikeman on, on Horus. So he will die in a second. Okay, so with the Rohirrim Arches, the Rohan player should be able to get a bit more, more map control, but again, Rohan will lack of damage leadership. So Tyrion gives you 30% damage, and this one gives you another 30. So you would have 60% damage boost in total, right? But Eoma all alone gives you more damage, so that's also very important. Okay, nice. Look, the Rohirrim Arches are shredding those Uru Pikemen and Lords Lords is trying to press the S button trying to cheese use Palantir trying to make it out from this nightmare of a situation pressing S will make the enemy unit stop for a second the pikemen are very actually inside the tower now he's trying to place Lords in it in there the pikemen with the armor and stuff look he's gonna place Lords but I mean, it's gonna delay his death there is no escape the Citadel will go down, it will drop Lourdes out of it, and then he's lost. He's legit lost, he can't make it. So maybe you can cripple, but you have no follow-up. Lourdes has been killed for the second time. So Rohan is now gaining the control of the second outpost outside, more focusing more on the, uh, on the outpost control than on the settlements. Uh, this mill here has actually been around for a long time, almost level 2. Okay, and also putting arches inside the outpost, not bad. All right, so more Rohirrim Arches. Now he's going for the Horseman Shield to make to get more resistances versus arrows with the normal Rohirrim. And look this, dude. It's just like in the films, you know. Right now, right for ruin and the war is ending. And you see, that's why you need to make combos. But the problem is Lourdes is only level 1. And you need pikemen with the combos. It's very important because your opponent has glorious charge. If you use it and charges through your combos, you will get one shotted. And you can look. You see, when you get Rohirrim archers with the Rohan faction later on, it's very hard for Isengard to maintain map control without the Vork riders. Vorks they have the mobility advantage. They can destroy the farm and you know be pressuring the map a bit faster, better compared to the pikemen. Lord Saruman one combo and two pikes. Okay, I think Rohan can fight this legit. I mean Rohan can fight this. He has only two Rohir marches though. Maybe go for more. Double outpost control. This one is going to buff the arches inside the outpost, so they will deal more damage. Okay, so also Saruman should be using this one on cooldown. Whenever it's available, use it, use it, use it. It's actually snowballing quite hard. Every 90 seconds, you get to give levels and experience to your units for free. And there is no reason to not use it every time it's available. Fireball, beautiful fireball, and Lourdes was close. Don't lose the level 5 Rohirrim. There comes the Elvin Wood, but Rohan, I, I, Isengard might be able to cover this. Is he gonna cover this? No, he has no power points for it. Fighting on. Oh, but he stole all the Rohirrim archers. Fight for me, and I will reward you, son. Dude, the wizard Saruman has been popping off lately in the videos, guys. That's crazy. I mean, he's, my, he's the good of Middle Earth, by the way. And now he's not done yet. Look, good placement. He's gonna force them. I mean, he might be killing this one, but Rohirrim are very fast and they actually will get away. I mean, not many losses, but still a good W for Isengard. Lourdes wasn't cri uh, crippling. That's a big mistake. So you need to. Guys, the Lords has only one mission. So whenever you see a hero, just use the cripple and force at least Theodin to disengage. So he can't be nearby to support them with additional damage and armor leadership. It's very important. So now uh, Isengard is coming from the bottom side. And he's going to try to sandwich this outpost over here. Okay. Oh, but that's free. That's free. You see? That's free. He's going to use Palantir. And now you need to react to this. So Lourdes, almost level 3. That's going to unlock the Carnage. Map control is looking amazing for Isengard. Beside the two outposts. And now beautiful trample. But remember, Glorious Charge is on cooldown. He's aiming the Theorin with the towers. Oh, that was really close. Only one of it, one away from getting killed. And now he's committing to the outpost at the bottom side. Theodin is very, very big chunked. Heal is on cooldown. He has three power points in the bank. And Glorious Charge is still on cooldown for the next 10 seconds. 
can he be patiently waiting war chant has been used aim for saruman you want to kill him with the arches inside the outpost boom 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 chakalaka he is actually going on the lords for no reason you want to kill saruman lords has been killed for the third time i mean isengard this was greedy move you know because here they have, you have no rain right first of all you have no rain he went for the industry and the vestation money so he's he has no land or rain and he's fighting around the strongest spot with the sustain of the well and the leadership the statue provides right this one gives you additional 50 percent more damage 30 percent armor so rohirrim while fighting around this location have more than 80 percent more damage they have more than 80 percent more armor you know and they level up way faster too and each level on this rohirrim marches are crucial because they get stronger so much stronger with each level they get you know that's why keeping those units alive throughout the entire game is also very important towering up for no reason it's wasted of uh, 1400 each tower costs rohan 700 in the bank and maybe you want to go for elma too because there's a high chance you can place elma next to the rohir marches and you can level up and getting elma level 4 is going to be such a big big spike for the rohan power and make your Rohirrim Arches deal way more damage. Okay, so almost re available. Lourdes and Saruman has been killed. Lourdes has been revived for the third time, for the number four. I think recruit three times death. So that's the fourth time he's investing into Lourdes. Saruman is, uh, was level seven. You know, he has like two minutes and 30 seconds cooldown. Uh, re recruit time. Each level, you know, they gain almost each level will increase the re recruit time or the revive time rather when you lose them so bigger punishment and after killing the two isengard heroes uh you know obviously rohan was able to get map control the works are in tink and you see that's it's snowballing out of control for <laughs> rohan because isengard was playing it too defensively early game letting rohan creep freely the entire map right rohan was creeping slowly he was recruiting theorin giving last to theorin on like three creeps and you can't let this happen you need to scout more you want to pressure more send out pikemen more forward and go for you know works a bit sooner look this uh, rohan army oh my goodness okay so that's gonna be a big clash Ooh, son does he have land Ooh, saruman got insta killed but he has eight power points in the bank he needs to step out of this land He's gonna get shredded here, isn't he? Don't even use it now. Don't even use it. I mean, it's pointless to use it. Because you will lose the fight no matter what. Oh, Tyrion got killed, though. Actually, the pikemen are shredding everything. Level 4 pikemen. Don't lose level 10 Rohirrim Archer. Don't lose the level 7 Rohirrim. Why is he doing this? Oh my goodness. Okay. Back off, back off. This is a big win for Rohan. No well around this uh, location. And what you want to do, you want you can also recruit Aragorn, right? Does he have Aragorn? He has Aragorn, actually. He has Gimli, too. He went, he went for the Gimli and Aragorn. So Aragorn with Anduri Sword and Gimli. Look, Gimli, boys. <laughs> Aragorn is such a big, big spike, by the way. Look this. You get additional speed. So with, without Anduril, Aragorn is as fast as Gimli is. With Anduril, Aragorn is as fast as Lourdes is or Legolas is. Okay? Cripple. Use Elaine deal. Oh, the pikes are shredding him. Elaine deal it. He's no fear resistant around this location. He's literally feeding now for no reason. You could Elaine deal this easily. Uh, now Gimli's gonna die too. Yeah, Gimli's gonna die too. There is no way. And this is giving so much. Look, in this situation, I know there is so much happening, and I want, I'm just trying to give tips. In this situation, when you know you will kill them, try to give the last hit to Lourdes, okay? So try to make sure that Lourdes is the one who's getting the last hit on either one or both, like Aragorn or Gimli. Because it will give him a huge EXP boost, and it will be very close to level 5. And that's gonna be very important for you to win the fight. When your combos, uh, you know have lords with level 5 around them and saruman they get additional damage in armor which makes them 
hit way harder and tank way more and you can one shot Rohirrim arches even through the glorious arch with your combos so getting Lourdes level 5 for a 60 percent more damage boost is crucial it's a huge army but in the next fight we will have Saruman back in the business and Lourdes back in the business again Saruman is finally using the speechcraft something he should be doing way more often 8 power points 12 will be from the Balrog and Gondor is only 6 power points and a quarter away from his EOD and the reason for that is he went for too many power points so imagine he wouldn't go for the Anduri sword or he wouldn't go for the Elvin Wood I mean Elvin Wood was really, really important but you could literally go like this you can go this 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 and then you can go immediately this one so you would have be able to save like five power points and you have four so you had like nine you would only be one power point away from the EOT but it's fine big glorious charge Theodin should be getting back you know don't get crippled for no reason there comes the freezing rain at this point when you see the freezing rain as Rohan the thing you want to do is bail but he's over committing for no reason the second glorious charge is on cooldown you will get hard stopped that is it's not a good trait so he will lose the vast majority of his army for only destroying one Uruk pit and that's a bad trade in my book and also this Rohirrim might be actually getting killed level 4 level 2 level 3 I don't think they can make it out of uh, alive from the situation but Isengard can do is send them in between in the middle of the of the base here right and then the second they get the control handed over to the Rohan player every tower is gonna sh start shooting and they would all die we, we hear Eoma's voice now but it might be a little bit too late for Eoma Aragorn is gonna be also be back very very soon and Legolas has been recruited as well so the problem here is Legolas is a very strong hero but he needs levels to be strong and leveling up against the you know upgraded Uruks and pikemen with the armor leadership they get from Saruman and the Warchant armor leadership is gonna be quite difficult and also Cloudbreak doesn't really do much it won't stun them when Saruman is nearby and Isengard can simply use the vision of Palantir to get fear resistance too so I would say it would be a better choice to go for the ends because you can summon the ends on top of the enemy combos and then start moving in different directions and they can trample the Uruk Cosmoman combos and one shot them 13 power points level 5 yeomans don't lose them save them okay i mean rohan is still map control and map control with rohan is very important outpost control against isengard or mordor later on is going to be crucial because if you have no outpost control what will happen is you will you know have to deal with balrog at some point and if you have only one castle balrog can be summoned oh beautiful fireball he has level eight look this wizard is popping off guys we love Saruman a bit too early. There comes the Alvin Wood. Uh, Isengard is not trying to counter this. But fighting on the Alvin Wood, Saruman has been killed. To hitting like a truck. Almost 20 power points. Almost 10 power points. And I think Isengard is going to get it a bit sooner. Yes, sir. Isengard is now officially. But Isengard is even winning this fight. The pikemen are shredding everything, dude. Holy. Eodi available. Look, the pikemen are going crazy. Okay, so he's summoning the Balrog on the, in the base and pressuring with the Vorks. He is going for the victory. So, ooh, son. Now, now the Cloud Plague would be a better choice because then you can stun them and they can't destroy this. Okay, but he has the outpost here. So he won't be defeated. Um, and also, I think the Balrog is going to be able to finish this. The Rohan Beast is the easiest base to be destroyed with the Balrog because you have only 7 spots to be killed. The farm is ready. You want to use... Yeah, kill this. 2 hits you need. Oh, he cancelled the alternate animation for no reason. Oh, he could have done this much, much better. I think now he can't be finishing this. Nah, he can't be finishing this now okay oh but the thing is look at the command points from rohan guys he has 10 command points only right only legolas was able to survive this gimli has been killed aragorn has been killed eoma level 2 has been killed theodin level 6 has been killed two minutes revive time
right? And also the stable almost destroyed. So he has almost 4k in the bank. Isengard was able to get the control of the top outpost. The like 80% of the castle from Rohan has been destroyed. The thing you can do with, uh, you know, Balrog is when you realize you can't destroy the castle yourself, you can use Balrog to break the gate. So use Ignite, then you can two shot the gate, and then when you destroy the citadel right after, you will have to wait for a long time to be able to repair this. So you can then send your army forward through the broken gate and easily easily fix it so level four almost gimli and also each level on this dude matters so boom extra boom chunking okay he's using the whole ability for more resistances and gimli should be easily killing them with the leap attack but he's not going to use it and with the works final you see how important the war riders are in this matchup because they are going to be extremely valuable for the map control and you can see the map is again looking blue to me. Um, so EOD and Balrog have been unlocked at the same time. But Isengard was impatient, which was the right call by the way, and using Balrog immediately. Now it's already almost halfway back up, okay? So I want you to understand. 8 minutes 30 seconds cooldown we have on this ultimate summons like Balrog and EOD. 8 minutes 30 seconds. So every minute you are not using it, you are wasting cooldowns for no reason. So now he needs to be fast, but Rohan's eco is not looking very promising. He needs to replace all the units he lost, but unfortunately you can't replace level 7 or level 10 units, that's not possible. So what, he's, what he needs to try to do, I think what he's trying to do at this point, is to gather a big army, force a big fight, use EOD to kill the heroes in this army and then finish him right after he has almost four power points so basically the, the EOD will guaranteeily give him enough power points for the end special summon ends can also be good for sieging right because you can easily tank those arrows for a long time and take down multiple structures yourself with the ends so now Rohan has Gimli back up Legolas almost level four Aragorn is back in the, on the menu, so we have three hunters here, like in the films, and we have horses coming from the top side. So Rohan, first of all, focusing on the map control, but you need to be fast, dude. You need to be fast, it's really important, because Balrog is reloading. Isengard is camping way too much. Like, he's literally sitting in the base and waiting for no reason. The situation won't get better, and that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen... Kill the army first. Isengard's commands are dropping. He was hiding some of the works here. One combo over here. Lord is running for his life. Where is Saruman? Saruman is also high. Oh, smart. Smart. Actually, very smart. But Lords, stop running. Don't lose Lords. Oh, that's bad. Lords and Saruman here. Oh my goodness. I mean, the idea was very smart to hide those combos and works because he knew it's gonna come, the AOD, right? He, you know, you, uh, at some point, when you play this game for a long time, you know how close your opponent has to be for the Balrog or for the AOD. And for example, I, sorry, I was hitting the microphone. For example, Isengard player lost the Saruman and Lords over and over again. He lost multiple battles, so he knows his opponent is very close, if not already at the point to summon his EOD and then he was preparing trying to prepare for this I'm being honest the ultimate summons in BFME 1 are just too broken like EOD and a Balrog everything when there is no counterplay to this feels like incredibly OP and broken but I think you guys are in love with the Balrog and EOD so no and sometimes they're also very important too because sometimes the game is in a loop situation in which you can't really advance and in this situation, I think Balrog and AOD is important, but they are just too strong, man. It's unbelievable. Oh my goodness, man. Deja vu from the films, boys. Wizard must be. And three hunters smashing. Orphan must fall. Boom, boom, boom. 
Balrog is almost available. Level 4 Legolas. Aragorn hitting like a truck. Gimli, level 5. Leap attack awaitable. He never used Elendil. People don't understand how important Elendil actually is. And you can just dis disengage. Look, you see too much damage. The Vorks with Warchant, Hole, Pikes, and Tower shooting. Balrog, beautiful summon. He killed a bunch of Rohirrim too. Look at this, boys. The smoke. Take this. Mm, you want to step a bit closer. So the magical way you see this rock on the ground, you want to you want to be next to the ground. You want to be right here. Then when you breath fire like this way. It will hit this building, this building, and this building. Your goal is to destroy in the Rohan Castle three buildings with your breath fire. It's very important and crucial when you want to be able to destroy the whole castle. And you want to cancel animations like it does. You want to cancel the animations. So this time you will be able to destroy this. It's good for him. But the problem here is... Uh, he was trying, but that's not possible. But the problem here is Rohan has enough money to just buy it back. And I don't know how we found ourselves in a situation like this. Oh, even... What is this game, dude? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. <gasps> don't tell me! Yeah, no way this is happening. Buddy block this. Buddy block this. Don't let him destroy the citadel. Oh, boy. Look, he's buddy blocking. Yeah, just lose them, whatever, you know? Just build up all the towers. And the second they're all built up, you can't... Glorious Charge is gone. Every tower is shooting. And Rohirrim, they will go down. Go down, down to Goblin Town. Holy guacamole. Damn, son. Dude, it's unbelievable. What? That's crazy. Now, what? I, I didn't see that car. <laughs> what the heck is this game? <laughs> okay. I mean, how much money does Isengard had? I mean, obviously, right? You have to fill the fires, industry, devastation, in rotation, this active pretty much non-stop. So your number meals look look the game goes on for a, such a long time that the workers have no more trees to harvest. They need to walk to Afghanistan. I mean, I'm feeling bad for them because working in those circumstances is not good. Imagine you work like this. Imagine you are, you know, living in UK and working in USA. And you need to go there every morning and, you know, it's what the heck. Okay, the last attempt. Let's see if EOD. And uh, nope, it's not available yet for the next two minutes. Nah. Nah. Rain. And let me check. Yep, it's on cooldown. Level 3 building, by the way. I mean, I, I would like to know how much money this Lambert Mill gave to Isengard throughout the entire game. Now for Wrath. Now for Ruin. And the Red Dawn. The elves, they, they are dying. Yo, this is gonna be available soon, but you have two castles and almost the whole map versus only two outposts. Okay. And Rohan is poor. And he's very poor, actually. That's why Elma is also very important because Elma has the outlaw leadership, which makes, you know, you know, kind of get money for killing enemy units and destroying enemy buildings. Nah, this is not looking too good. EOD. The problem is now with the EOD, you need to destroy a whole castle. But the other problem is going to be even if you... Let's assume you are destroying the castle, right? Here. It's going to use EOD, ends, and EOD too. 
but as let's assume you are destroying this castle right it's great but how what do you want to do after you have no money to buy this one and even if you buy this one the balrog is going to be available in like one minute and destroy it again so you have to you you know guys it's it's hard to explain but you investing a powerpoint just to gain something back you have lost yourself is a win-win situation for your opponent because his main castle this one is perfectly safe with multiple level three furnaces with a great self-defense and now you are blowing away all your cooldowns and summon a cooldown of six minutes aod a cooldown of eight and a half minutes right and also you know potentially heal will be used eventually right and then you are destroying this but you have not the eco to buy it back and during all this time isengard was able to destroy your outpost one of your own one of your two main settlements remaining keeping you in the scheme and his balrog is going to be available in like 10 seconds or one minute and he has the money to buy this castle we are talking about isengard but rohan can't he has only 2300 and you need more than two times the money you have collected so far to rebuy the castle glorious charge will be used cripple he won't use it lords disengage uh he's running it down he will die where is saruman at i think he didn't revive saruman for a long time did he cripple him nah I mean, at this point when you know you will die just cripple him and this rohirrim should trample and not fight in the melee with the glorious charge i mean rohan will win this fight it's no problem no pikeman for isengard it's a big bit risky look he's trying to buy stole time but rohan has not the money anyway for this so aragorn aragorn Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, summon Balrog to buy the castle. But Rohan could not be able to buy the castle anyway. Aragorn is screaming. Use Atelas. Oh, oh, look, look, look. Will of Saruman. Oh, he didn't use Will of... Elendil it, man. Elendil it, bro. Okay, Aragorn is gonna be safe. But for how long? <laughs> there comes the demon of the ancient war. The last thing he does is to kill the man, the king of Gondor. GG well play, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like to this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future, which you should because I'm making this video while I'm super sick. I have 40 degrees fever and, you know, the show must go on. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.